Crackers. Welcome to Health Origins and welcome to my kitchen. This is Inga. So today uh, I'm going to show you a technique of how to fry onions um, or even celery and you can do the same with carrots um, without using any oil. This particular time I'll be, um, I'll be frying onion and I'll be making chili and bean stew. Um, the recipe is very simple and it's from the current uh, online course I'm doing, Forks Over Knives. I've got um, 30 days to complete it so I'll be doing you know a few recipes for you guys and hopefully showing you some tips um, from that as well. So let's get started. So here I've got my mise en place. So it's a French word, um, and if translated to English, I think it's um, it stands for implementation. But for me, it just basically means everything's in place and ready to start cooking. So um, what we've got here, we've got one um, large onion chopped small. I'll do um, in the future. I'll do a video how to kind of some tips and tricks of how to chop onions small. Um, I've got four um, cloves of garlic crushed here. You could chop them small as well. I'll show you some techniques in the future too. Um, I've got some basil roughly chopped. It's one cup of basil. Um, I've got a bit of um, salt, pink salt and pepper, about half a teaspoon each perhaps. Um, you just obviously work with your salt and uh, pepper preference to, to uh, season it at the end. Um, I've got a little bit of stock um, for deglazing the pan when I'm frying the onions. Uh, I've got obviously more stock about um, 500 ml or about two cups, just over two cups of uh, homemade stock that I made. You could use like obviously a, a cube with water as well. Um, and it recipe says about um, a tin, 420 gram tin of uh, pinto beans, which I don't have pinto beans. So I've kind of added a little slightly more. So one uh, <clears throat> one tin of, well, one box of um, kidney beans I use and one pinto beans. Um, I will not you add um, pinto beans straight away. You know how the recipe calls because they are quite uh, delicate and they're already boiled. So I'll just add them towards the end so for them to just warm up. But these are quite, you know, um, quite solid. So I'll put them you know, instead of pinto beans when the recipe calls for it. And then I've got um, one squash, but in a squash cubed in about a centimeter or just slightly bigger um, cubes. And I mean, it was quite a large, but in a squash, it says a medium one. I think it was on a large side, but I just needed to use it up, so I'll use that. And then it also called for about six ears of um, corn. So uh, taken off the hobs. Um, and I've used about five because I thought that's an awful lot of corn and I kept one for salads uh, for later in the week. So I've done um, five, five um, cups on the corn because actually it says about three and a half cups worth and that's definitely three and a half cups so, so I'm going with that. Um, and you know from, from the beans, how I showed you, I've got the beans and um, I've got the liquids separated. Um, and I'm going to use them, you know, for recipes. I mean, you could add this to the stew as well, both of them, really. I mean, the dark one might spoil the colour a little bit, so maybe, you know, you could use this one. But um, this is aquafaba. You get this from, you know, all sorts of beans and also chickpeas. So you use this, you can use this as an egg replacer, you can do morangs and just different things with it. So basically like you can use it as egg replacer. The same with that but obviously it's a different colour so perhaps you could add it to darker stews and things or burgers, you know. So I'll be, um, you know, putting them in the fridge and using it within a week or if you don't use it, um, you know, in a few, in the next few days then just freeze it because they can freeze in like... Um, ice cube trays and you know things like that so it's quite handy okay so let's get on to um, the frying so 
We're by the uh, hob now and we'll be starting to fry the onions. So I've placed the um, pot, this is a um, non-stick pot. You could use stainless steel as well um, and with that one you would need to kind of heat it quite um, quite a bit until you can drop a droplet of water, well like maybe um, one, one fourth of a teaspoon um, you know, measure and if the if the water makes into a like um, mercury ball r rolling around, then it means it's hot enough. But with the um, non-stick, I like that you kind of you know can just heat it for a couple of minutes and you're good to go. And it's on um, on medium to high um, kind of flame. So you want it you know nice and hot, and then we'll add the onions. So, adding my onions, and you know it's hot enough because as soon as I add it, you can hear a sizzling sound. So, so yeah, and um, so basically, just just mix it up and um, let it fry a little. The onions will um, slightly stick, so obviously make sure you move around the pan um, and kind of try and caramelize all sides. Um, we'll, uh, we'll fry them, as, and, and like, the longer you fry, it starts um, releasing their own liquid slightly. So um, don't be afraid that it sticks straight away when you put them in because they kind of release a little bit. Um, and after about three four minutes, we'll um, once once there's like some brown um, some brownness from them on the bottom of the pan, we'll uh, pour some um, stock to deglaze it and kind of um, caramelize or brown the onions with their own sugars because that's what happens and um, the sugars from the onions and um, get stuck onto the bottom of the of the pan and um, and that's where the brown comes from so it's just sugars and uh, caramelizing at the bottom of the pan you can see a little bit uh, of it happening already so I'll, I'll um, give it another couple of minutes and then I'll show you closer up to see if you can see caramelizing happening. So basically that's it. You don't need any oil to fry your onions. Um, just make sure you've got your non-stick pan or even you can do with stainless steel like I said. It will stick a little bit more and perhaps you'll need to deglaze it a little bit you know through the way you cook in. So you know you kind of fry it for a couple of minutes, pour you know a tablespoon or two of water and then cook more and you know kind of that way whereas with a non-stick pan um, it's a little bit easier so um, but this this is a great pot because it's like deep you know and it's quite wide too so it's great one pot dish really and if you get something like this big but non-stick and all the surface of it is non-stick so then you can start with frying you know your onions, your carrots, your celery and then finishing off with adding other ingredients, your stock, your um, water, whatever else, you know, and then just let it bubble away afterwards and, you know, have it as a stew or, you know, curry anything. So I love this spot and I got it um, quite cheaply. I don't know, it was about maybe £15 or something from Lidl. So uh, it's worth sometimes having a look because they do have some good, good different offers. So yes, yeah, so now there's some caramelizing definitely happening at the bottom of the pan. So there you go, you can see some some onions caramelized and stuck to the bottom of the pan here. So what I'll do, I'll add a little bit of stock, probably half of my stock. And let that deglaze. See, and it's just instantly, you know, no longer stuck to the bottom. And see how the onions turned 
kind of um, golden colour brown. So um, we can do a little bit, you know, a couple more times like this until we use that quarter of a cup of um, stock to caramel caramelise them a little bit more. And then once we've done our onions, we'll um, put our garlic in. Yeah, so um, we're not cooking garlic very long. Um, I've put it in only for one minute. Um, so so that it just gets nice and fragrant and um, a lot of people do the mistake of putting their garlic together with their onions but it's completely different time scales garlic burns easily while onion can cook for a while so, so that's good so it's been almost a minute now I'm gonna add all of my um, stock to just stop the garlic from burning, deglaze the whole bottom of my pan, and I'm gonna add other ingredients um, like the recipe indicates. So I'm gonna add my butternut squash. It's gonna be quite a lot. And I'm gonna add my um, corn and lastly I'm gonna add my kidney beans like I said my pinto beans I'm not gonna add at this point yet because they are a bit more gentler and I uh, don't want them to get mushy so I'm gonna add them towards the end maybe the last five or ten minutes um, of this and now um, I'll I'll um, increase the the flame a little bit to get this up to um, to kind of boiling, and then we'll simmer it for about 25 minutes. The recipe says, or until the squash is cooked. So I'll I'll test it, and then um, and then we'll see. So I'm gonna let it now come to temperature, come to boil. And I'll so now the stew is uh, bubbling nicely. I've added that um, light aquafaba liquid from the uh, from cannellini beans. So because it wasn't enough liquid before, I thought so. I'm going to reduce the um, gas slightly now, and I'm going to put a lid and let it simmer for um, about um, 20 minutes because it's been about five minutes already I think. The pot is bubbling away it's been about 20 minutes so for the last five minutes or so I'm adding the um, cannellini beans to the stew and giving it a stir I'm also going to um, test a bun and a squash piece and see it, whether it's, it's nearly there or not. Yeah, it's pretty soft, it's pretty soft. So I would say five more minutes just to warm up the cannellini beans and we'll be switching off, uh, putting some uh, salt and pepper and once um, you know, once it's off the heat, then we'll. It's been about five minutes uh, since I've added the cannellini beans, and I'm gonna take it off the heat now. Add the seasoning and uh, basil, and the dish will be complete. So here goes salt and pepper. it through and as you can see and um, you can still see separate uh, cannellini beans so they haven't mushed through and here goes the basil there you go the dish is complete all 
all um, you need now is a taste tester. So the dish is called Chilean bean stew and you can eat this with quinoa or rice um, you know anything that you fancy and as luck would have it I've got a taste tester here in the shape of Mark hi guys <laughs> okay. my, my lovely husband who made some rice for us to have with the stew so the most important part <laughs> of course so you're trying Chilean bean stew, which might be still quite hot. Mmm. Mmm. It's very tasty. Yeah. It might need a bit more salt and pepper, but I hope, we can uh, add that after. I hope the portion becomes bigger. <laughs> but of course, there's a full pot of it. Yummy. Thank you. So there you have it, there's chili and bean stew that's going to feed us for the next couple of days and I hope you guys will also try it and let me know in the comments below how you enjoyed it and um, if you like the recipe how the no oil frying worked for you guys and I hope you've learned something useful. So till the next time.